Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Dearest Mother, Love Ruth, John, and Mark. Ruth Smallshaw Ray's Letters to Her Mother, 1952, Part 75. This is the first part of the original publication, Smallshaw Family Memories Collection, or SFMC number 36, published on May 19, 1999. Letter from the editor, Peter J. Ray, yours truly. Hi, everybody. How's everything? Well, the big day finally arrived. November 9th, 1952. The arrival of Mark Doran Ray. Yay! Yahoo! Yay! He's here. Well, this issue just couldn't be more exciting. It's as simple as that. The birth of Mark was the most exciting event of Ruthie's life so far. Through it all, John was so good, calm, strong, and helpful. Ruthie's life would never be the same as she assumed the role of mother. Her carefree, swinging days were over. Mark's birth coincided with the big move across town to Bay Village, 602 Huntmere Drive. Ruthie was really missing her mother when the postpartum depression set in, but Gus Smallshaw inexplicably didn't arrive to see Ruth, John, and Mark till much later. What an event! The arrival of Mark Doran Ray, certainly a most wonderful and special baby. We're talking about an, an advanced soul here, who would stop nursing and gaze with shining eyes into the eyes of his mother. How wonderful it has been to have Mark as a part of our wonderful family, Peter J. Ray. St. Luke's Hospital, Cleveland, Ohio, November 13th, 1952. <laughs> Dearest Mother and Dad, or should I say, Hi, Grandma and Grandpa. Sunday was the most tremendously thrilling day of my entire life, and I only hope I'll be partially able to share it with you through this letter. <laughs> I realize that you've been dying to hear the details and only wish I'd had pen and paper Sunday night for... S since then, this routine has kept us so busy that we hardly have time to do anything extra. Mark Doran Ray is the most wonderful baby, and so very much like his daddy that it's amazing. There's no two ways about it. You'll just have to come to see him soon. It tears my heart to think that the two big events in your life, in your only two children's lives, Bud's wedding and your first grandchild, coming so close together, and you not sharing either. I do so wish you'd flown or driven out to Calgary. With us, it's been a series of exciting events. <clears throat> In order, our house deal went through Friday. Saturday, we chose a new larger refrigerator, double oven, stove, automatic washer. Sunday, we had labor and the baby. This week, John's been renting the apartment and trying to sell the fridge, stove, table, drapes, and rug to whomever will rent the apartment. We hope a deal will be cinched tonight. Grandparents Ray and Aunt Carol came in tonight. Dick Monday and Miss Bender Tuesday with John, only two visitors a day, but John was persuasive tonight. Tomorrow, Mrs. Ray cleans our house in Bay Village and she and John will move Friday and Saturday. Mark, Doran, and Mama go to their new home. What a week! I'll never be able to express the joy of seeing my own baby boy born, seeing his umbilical cord cut, hearing him cry and touching him, and it was almost while we were still one. No woman could ever doubt the tremendous creative spirit of our universe. It's almost as if you've never really seen anything clearly before, and I prayed aloud as my baby was born with the wonderment of it all. Everyone in the delivery room seemed equally moved and jubilant. John wanted so to be there too, and I only hope he will be for our next. I can't be grateful enough for the education, preparation, and modern methods of psychology and surgical or rather medical skill. I knew what to expect, and God granted me my prayer that I be able to cope with the situations that arose and that my baby be born safely. I'm fortunate that it was in this day and age and with the doctor, for even today all are not so fortunate. At 2.30 a.m., are you interested? 
I went to the bathroom and knew immediately by the pink-tinged mucus that labor would begin shortly. <clears throat> I reasoned that since the average first labor is 18 hours, the baby would be born Sunday evening, so there was no rush. I woke John and we started timing my contractions. When they were eight minutes apart at 5.30 a.m., we got up and started getting ready, but they then slowed up until a half hour apart, so we went back to bed. By 7.30, they were 10 minutes apart until 9.30 when we left for the hospital. We'd talked to Vince and Mary before we left. In the hospital at 10.20, they examined me and said I was just starting to dilate, and it might be 24 hours. However, after the perineal shave and enema, the contractions speeded up to five minutes apart. John was with me, and he read Bruce's, Bruce Partridge's doctoral thesis and timed my contraction for me while I tried to relax during them. It was just wonderful having my calm, strong husband sitting by me. Dr. Taylor was so helpful and came in at intervals. He'd sit down and help me to relax. He went to listen to the football game, and John had it on the earphone, and I was content to bear each contraction, knowing that each was dilating, dilating the cervix more and bringing my baby nearer. It helped. By 5 o'clock p.m., <coughs> a nurse came in <coughs> and said Dr. Taylor had left. Word that I could have Demerol, a drug, <coughs> if I wanted it but that she felt it would lengthen my labor. I refused it then, but Dr. Taylor came in and said he felt it was time, that I needed it, and, to the contrary, it would speed things up. <coughs> I was grateful, and John said, You're the pro, Doc. It was definitely time, and it helped during the six contractions of the transition stage by making me drowsy. Suddenly, a nurse called. She's bearing down. I was and said goodbye to John and was wheeled to the delivery room, pushing all the way. I immediately had the spinal, asked them to adjust the mirror, and saw Dr. D Taylor help the baby's head out with outlet forceps while I could feel the top of the contractions and see my stomach cave in. I never cried or yelled, much as I felt like it, believe me nor did they strap my hands, although I did grunt. My coccyx bone, tailbone, sticks up in the birth canal, Dr. Taylor explained during the process. With a small or normal head, there's difficulty, but with a large head such as the baby has, it was quite a job getting the head over the bone. He had to cut, make an episiotomy, 15 stitches later to close, I asked if it were not possible that you, mother, were built the same way, since you had difficulty. And he said it was entirely possible, since our skeletal frame is inherited. So, dear, you did have your babies 30 years too soon. I saw him cut, deliver, saw the umbilical cord cut, heard the baby cry, and touched him. I saw the placenta and afterbirth. John said everyone from the delivery room was beaming, and he was so choked with emotion when he saw him that all he could say was, That's just fine. Vera said that John told her that I was simply beautiful as they brought me from the delivery room, and he certainly looked wonderful to me. After the baby came, I talked to the nurses about teaching, and when I s said as he cried when he was born, The poor little baby... They all laughed, for he's not little. They teased me for being a piker and not reaching nine pounds. Dr. Taylor and the nurses said I'd been a very good girl. I was the most surprised of all and will never know where he hid himself. I was so worried I'd have a four-pounder, and John was too. No wonder he, he kicked so much. He didn't have enough room. We're sorry you don't like Mark, but I think everyone should have one saint or at least one Christian name, and Mark and John are two of the very nicest to me, to us. He has, Mark has a triangular birthmark on his chest like his daddy, a large head like his daddy, large, wide-spaced eyes like his daddy, 
a second longer toe like his daddy, a sweet small mouth like his daddy, nice flat ears like his daddy, and a dimple in his chin. He even perspires on his forehead like John. I prayed for a baby like John and just pray now that we'll be able to bring him up to be as nice as his daddy. He eats well from the first and I nurse him every four hours, five times a day, and seem to have lots of milk. His eyes were open from the first and looks around, but also sleeps real soundly like all babies. I love him so much it hurts. John stayed with me for a couple of hours after and then went home and wired you. I'm so lucky to have such an unusually fine husband. He certainly has a busy schedule this week and visits me every evening. Miss Bender brought me some lovely yellow roses. John wanted talisman for me but had to settle for chrysanthemums in lovely fall colors. And Mrs. Ray brought me white and yellow roses and three talisman. Lovely! Dick is certainly the proud uncle and more enthusiastic than I've ever known him to be. He told John he'd not have missed seeing us for the world. He gave us $20 and Carol brought up a nylon sweater set and Mrs. Ray brought a piggy bank started for baby Mark plus food for John and them. Everyone has phoned me and Duff long distance. Her baby is due today. Mary, Vera, Jer, Joan, Muriel, all our close friends, and I've gone through the whole wonderful story until my roommate must know it by heart, but she's so swell. Her third baby, a boy, th a boy three and one one, and now a girl, a lovely family. I hope we can have another baby a year from next spring. I thank Dr. Taylor for helping the baby out, and he said the next day, that I'd still be in there if he hadn't, that it would have exhausted me and, and, bas and bashed the baby's head trying to go, go over the coccyx bone. So I certainly can feel lucky that I was in the hands of a specialist or this would not be this happy letter it is. Four hours after, at 10 o'clock p.m., after John left, a girl came in to see me. She was in the picture in the newspaper with me hair in a ponytail. She couldn't believe I'd had the baby only four hours earlier and said that hers had been the most terrifying day of her life, that she'd hate to go through it again, that she didn't remember seeing her doctor or anyone, never her husband, that she was hysterical most of the time and didn't remember anything, but that it was horrible, that the next day her arms were black and blue from having shots. She had a relatively short labor of about six hours and had a seven-pound girl. So all, even today, do not have the success I feel I did. I was on the other end of the tour today when they brought in a group and said, This girl made the tour two months ago. One girl was from my class and so surprised to see me, asked if I'd been able to relax. Our routine is so crowded with breastfeeding, eating, washing, checking menus. We get what we want if we check it. Cleaning of the perineum, heat lamps for stitches, juices, visitors, pad changes, thermometers, doctor checks, uterine checks, bands lightened, going to the bathroom. I get up as soon as I wanted to Tuesday that I'm writing this at 10.30 p.m., for I have no time during the day. I also have a masseuse of my neck and back and numerous phone calls. Everyone is amazed at our 8-pound, 12-ounce son, none more than I. It seems strange that I never was tired carrying him, nor did my back bother me in labor. I'm glad to say I did try to get my protein diet of an egg, meat, milk every day, and plan to keep it up so we can raise a healthy family with healthy appetites. I've never felt happier nor more contented. Dr. Taylor told John that I should have help for two months, but I'm sure that with John's cooper cooperative spirit, I'll get along fine after Mrs. Ray leaves. We were thinking of Bud and Doris on their big, on their big day yesterday. John sent them a wire, and we were wishing you'd go too. What was the big idea of them being so cozy about the whole thing anyway? 
It's certainly a strange way, but wish them the best of luck and happiness. I must say good night. There's so much more to say, but you must fly down soon to see your first grandson. Lots of love from a very proud Mama and Papa, John and Ruth. 602 Huntmere Drive, Bay Village, Ohio, November 27th, 1952. <clears throat> Dear Mother and Dad, <clears throat> We have a little boy here that looks very much like his Grandma Smallshaw. John's mother said to be sure to tell you how much she thinks Mark looks like you, Mother. I guess you can discount just about everything I wrote to you from the hospital about how much he looks like John, although he still does have a dimple in his chin. It's been so strange to see his ch hair change, for he was born with very dark hair, and it's gradually becoming lighter and lighter, as have his eyelashes and eyebrows. All our friends and John's family thinks it's, it's wonderful that we have a little red-headed boy. However, he's more of a sandy shade right now, except when the sun shines on it, and it has a definite red tinge. You've probably wondered at what's been happening the past couple of weeks. An awful lot. All wasn't too happy with me in the hospital. The day after the baby came, I felt wonderful, but a mild headache started getting worse. They put me on aspirin, then on straight caffeine for six days, which left me sleepless just about the whole week I was in the hospital. The sleeping pills only lasted about an hour. The day I wrote to you, or, or rather night, <clears throat> it was about 11.30, 12.30 p.m. They started giving me shots of vitamins, B, and compounds, which really helped wonderfully. They said the headaches were caused possibly from the spinal, that when they inject the needle to remove some of the spinal fluid in order to give the spinal, that some of the spinal fluid might get into the surrounding tissues and upset the equilibrium of the spinal fluid between the brain and the spinal cord, and that the brain sinks down into the end of the spinal cord and gives these terrific headaches until the balance is restored. However, the doctor said that this is a theory only and not proved. John's mother said she had them too, only she had no spinal, so thinks they're probably from loss of blood and vitamin B shots are given for anemia. The morning I wrote you, I couldn't lift my head from the pillow without thinking my head would blow off. However, the shots fixed me up. They also gave me a massage of the spine. I got the theory a bit mixed up and tried to tell John I had a shrinking, not sinking of the brain. The first few days home were rather hectic. John and his mother did a marvelous job of moving and getting things arranged. I just love our little brick house, and John has just been wonderful. The, f the first few nights I kept getting sort of hysterical and cried for you, mother. Being sleepless for so long just with everything else made me very emotionally unstable. I went through labor and childbirth well, but sort of cracked up when I tried to change his diaper. It seemed like the biggest job in the world. Happily, we're over that period now. It just seemed like I should have you with me, and I felt like a stranger in the whole world. John was so wonderful and talked to me at length, explaining that you'd come when you could and probably would enjoy the baby more later on. I hope you'll write and thank Mrs. Ray for all the wonderful things she's done for us, too. She was so understanding. In addition to cleaning up the house and moving things in, she made wonderful meals for us last week, gave the baby his first bath at home when he was a week old. I tried but wasn't up to it. She shopped for us and bought a new living room drapes that cost $40 and bought us white nylon curtains and rug for the baby's room. They gave Mark a piggy bank and previously $50 plus $10 toward the bassinet and bought us traverse rods, baby bunting, roses, and bed jacket for me. John sold our other rugs, drapes, kitchen, and bathroom curtains, dinette set, stove, and refrigerator for $500 to the people that leased the apartment. He really did a good job on that and, and on moving too. I do like our new big Westinghouse refrigerator and double oven grand gas stove and Whirlpool automatic washer. 
Haven't seen the ladders since I'm not, I'm not to go up or down stairs for two months. And John does all the washing, even the baby's clothes and diapers every evening. How lucky, how lucky can a girl get? John took me for a drive Sunday before his mother left. We're just a couple of blocks from the lake and near a lovely park on the lake, private for Bay Village residents. That will be nice next summer. We have nine lovely tall trees in our backyard and big fat squirrels playing in them and on the lawn in back. Very nice. Today is our Thanksgiving day and we have so much to be thankful for. It was John's first Thanksgiving away from home and I'm afraid nothing like the dinners he's used to when the family gather in Marion, Ohio. It's been so nice to have him home, though. I'm trying to nurse the baby. He certainly seems to have a tremendous capacity. They said that he got three ounces from one breast while I was in the hospital, and he looks like he's gaining weight. The pediatrician suggested that I start him on cereal, So yesterday he ate three teaspoonfuls and he's only a little over two weeks old. It's been like Christmas around here with all the gifts. I've got to get started on thank you notes too. Carol gave the baby a pretty green nylon sweater set and Dick gave us $20. Vera sent me chocolate in the hospital and Miss Bender brought up roses in a baby vase. Miss Kent sent a lovely set of plants and cactus in modernistic gold square pots. John's Aunt Lenore and Dale sent blue baby shoes, and his cousin Harold and Marge sent blue, a blue sleeper set. His cousin Marilyn and Dick sent a yellow sleeper bunting with zippered front. John's Uncle Fred and Helen sent a very nice baby silver bell rattle with the baby's name, birthday, time and weight engraved on it. Certainly something to keep. One of the little girls from my class at A.G. Bell sent a nice bath towel for on the bathinet with plastic bottom. Three years since I taught her. John bought us an ultra-modern bathinet with even a thermometer for temperature. The baby was circumcised by Dr. Taylor and his um umbilical cord came off last Sunday. Dr. Taylor was so wonderful. I am to call once a week and go back in six weeks. We've had so many nice cards, and I hope you'll thank Mrs. Martin, Mrs. Nilsson, and Grandma for theirs, too. I've been so introspective the last couple of weeks that I've hardly thought of anyone else. How are Bud and Doris? Let us know what they would like for a wedding gift. Anne and Wayne Duff also had a big baby boy, Paul Brooks Duff, 8 pounds on November 13th just four days after Mark was born. John and Wayne were born just nine days apart and are such good friends, and now they have sons just four days apart. Isn't that interesting? Anne called me in the hospital, and I called her from maternity ward to maternity ward. Vera, Joan, Jer, Mary, and Muriel all called me a couple of times, too. So nice to have telephones by your bed, especially when visitors are limited. Thank you so much for the parcel. John brought it up to me in the hospital. The nightgown is is in use already. R R. Anne had an unusual time with her new baby. Mike was born after only a couple hours labor, and for this one, she was in the doctor's office Thursday, November 13th, for a routine check. He said that she was dilating a little, so to go to the hospital... <coughs> and he'd come over in an hour and a half after he was through with his patients. Well, Anne said they went, to the, they went leisurely to the hospital, but after they examined her, that the resident physician could hardly wait for the doctor to come, for he was afraid the baby would come before the doctor would get there, and the, ba- the baby did arrive only two hours after she'd been in the doctor's office. However, he did arrive in time. The resident physician thought mine might take another 24 hours after he saw me, and I'd had 10 hours of contractions then. So I guess we're all just made differently. I told Ann that we'd all have to take lessons from her. She doesn't need any course in natural childbirth. That's certainly the way to have them. I'm glad that you now like the name Mark Doran. He's already got a nickname from his daddy, Marcus Aurelius. And John's dad said he'd call him Doc, since his initials are M.D. 
He's certainly a big boy, and it amazes me how he ever could have been inside me. Even when they were delivering him, and they bump in the tum- my tummy, and the bump in my tummy turned into a baby, it seemed amazing how big he seemed when they held him up. I was all set for a wee one. I'll be looking for a letter from you and hope you'll understand how busy things are here. I only have time now because John's changing Mark and doing the dishes. Miss Kent said that the kids at school were thrilled with the announcement and Jimmy had had his almost worn out. I thought you'd like to see Carolyn's note and like it back for I hope sometime to get a book and put all his cards in. I love you and have missed you tremendously, more so than in the past ten years. Say hi to Bud and Doris. Love, John, Ruth, and baby Mark. To be continued. Well, that concludes today's presentation. Uh, Good luck to you with your efforts in family history. If this interests you, finding, preserving, and sharing old letters, diaries, and photographs, and interviewing elderly relatives while they're alive, you might consider checking out our website, Adventures in History with Peter J. Ray at peterjray.com. So far, we've made 601 history videos in seven areas, world history, American history, book reviews, poetic tours, Cleveland baseball, family history, and autobiography. You also might consider checking out our podcast, Adventures in History. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.